is a look at the challenger and the current super featherweight champion. Julio Cesar Chavez, he is trying to become the third junior lightweight or super featherweight, depending on which division you're talking about, to win the lightweight title. The other two, of course, known names, Alexis Arguello and Hector Macho Camacho, who is in the audience tonight. Arguello beat James Watt, Camacho beat Jose Luis Ramirez. But there were many more who came before him who could not accomplish it. The likes of Kid Chocolate, who lost to Tony Canzanari. Flashy Lorde lost twice to Carlos Ortiz. And oh, Cornelius Rosa Edwards lost twice to Camacho and Ramirez. Although there is quite a bit of excitement here, it really doesn't measure up to the inflammatory passion of the time when Wilfredo Gomez fought Sanchez when there were dueling salsa and marachi bands and fights all over the place. But back home in Puerto Rico and Mexico, there is enormous emotional interest and investment in this fight. It's too cold to strum guitars. That's why there's no mariachi bands here. So here comes Chavez, quietly confident young man. 54 wins without a loss, 45 knockouts. Never had a knockout past the eighth round, though. He's gone that distance six times. And of course, as we discussed earlier, the fact that styles make fights and I think this fight particularly interesting in that aspect. So let's turn to Sugar Ray Leonard then and find out exactly what each of these two men has to do to win the fight tonight, Ray. Well, Barrett, tonight you will see two fighters executing different tactics. With Rosario, he gives you angles like he did against Camacho. Because given angles, you have a tendency to confuse your opponent. And also, it gives you more leverage behind your punch. And here against Bramble, you can see that the angles were quite effective. But you know, Barry, sometimes Rosario makes a mistake of being stationary. Here he is being a sitting target for Ramirez. And remaining stationary target against a fighter like Chavez could prove to be a fatal mistake. Here we take a look at Chavez. Has a tendency to cut the ring off. He's not really doing it here, but he must do it to be effective against Rosario. Cut the ring off and make Rosario fight his fight, which is toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Needs to get his man inside, turn this into a brawl, a street fight, and you probably see the tables turn. Chavez is a big puncher, especially to the body. Executes a beautiful left hook and a good right hand. So that's, you, you should look forward to that. All right, start moving back. Well, Chavez is in the ring, of course, and we mentioned how cold it is. Now, it says 58 degrees on a thermometer that we have right in front of us, but that is under the lights. So that's as warm as it's going to get. And there's no question but that Chavez is going to have to stay active. He's going to have to keep moving around because Rosario's making him wait. Uh, well, and he doesn't have the luxury, as I do, of wearing my silk skiing long johns. <laughs> so he's going to have to say, <laughs> stay active. You know, here I am outdoors at a fight at the end of November. Tomorrow I'm going to be indoors at a football game in Seattle. There's something cockeyed about this. <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> and it really is cold. The thermometer, as we mentioned earlier, 48 or 49 degrees, but there is a definite breeze here. Matter of fact, if they had a toss of the coin here, I'd take the wind. <laughs> I wonder if they'd fight two Eskimos at the equator. Here we have these two Latin fighters coming up to fight in this winterized ring. <laughs> and here is Chapo Rosario. And he's going to stay toasty warm under that robe and until things get started here. That makes a difference, Barry, because a lot of times uh, we have a tendency to put a blanket in a corner to keep the fighter warm. Maybe they'll have fur-lined supporters. <laughs> the Puerto Rican flag and the Puerto Rican supporters of Chapo Rosario have been very vocal, as have the Mexican supporters of Julio Cesar Chavez, as a matter of fact, each singing his or her country's national anthem. And here comes Rosario. For Rosario, 26 wins, two losses, three victories in an impressive fashion since his last loss. He's knocked out 22 of his opponents, and he says, point blank, I'm going to knock this man out too. And let's take a look at some of the other numbers before we get to the specific activities at hand, and these numbers really show very little difference between these two. The only numbers I saw that indicates 
that Rosario is really the bigger man is that his fists are a full two inches bigger than Chavez's. So Chavez has to hope that his chin is two inches smaller or stronger. And here we have our punch stat numbers that give us a statistical profile of how the fighters fight. Rosario throws straight punches. Chavez is a hooking puncher who, who is more active. That's what these numbers confirm. And here are their jabs. Rosario has a straight jab, an awfully good one, but Chavez is a more sophisticated fighter than we've seen many of the action-packed Mexican fighters before. And Larry will take a look at the rules in this fight, the 10-point must system. The three judges score the fight. There won't be a standing eight count. Fighter can be saved by the bell only in the final round. And the three knockdown rule will be in effect. And one other WBA rule, an important one at that, this will be a 12, not a 15-round fight. Now let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for the pre-fight introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Las Vegas Hilton Sports Arena, where tonight the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, in association with Don King Productions and the Miller Brewing Company, makers of Miller Light Beer, presents World Championship Boxing. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Herb Santos, Chairman, Chuck Minker, Executive Director. The commission is at ringside this evening, are Dr. Elias Ghanem, Freddie Little, Sick Rogic, and Dwayne Ford. The WBA representative at ringside, Dr. Elias Cordoba. Supervising the bout for the WBA is Mr. Murray Sleep of Halifax, Nova Scotia. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the evening. The judges are Bob Watson of Michigan, Al Tremere of Illinois, and Jerry Roth of the state of Nevada. The timekeeper is Charlie. Counting at the knockdowns, Mike Burrow. The attending physician at ringside, doctors Flip Homansky, James Game, and Al Camp uh, Capana. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Culiacan, Mexico. Weighing in at 134 and 3 quarter pounds. With a professional record of 54 wins, no defeats, and 45 KOs, he is the current WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World and is the challenger, Julio Cesar Chavez. <laughs> and in the red corner, Fighting out of St. Terce, Puerto Rico. Weighing an even 135 pounds. His professional record consists of 26 wins, two defeats, with 22 KOs. He is the WBA lightweight champion of the world, Edwin El Chapo Rosario. And one of the men in the ring with Rosario is Mike Tyson, his stablemate. There he is, that big broad back as big as Ohio. That's Mike Tyson, no lightweight he. It's also the first time I've ever seen him smile in a boxing ring. <laughs> and carry a bucket too. That's right. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt at all, none at all, that Rosario is the hardest puncher in the lightweight division. But the real question in any fight is, how does each man take the other guy's punch? In other words, if Chavez can handle that punch, and if Rosario can't handle Chavez's punch, then it's only, it's academic on who punches harder. It's who not only punches harder, but who takes a punch better. One thing okay. that I thought was interesting I too, and I'll well mention it after the instructions here. Room. I want to caution, and you both make sure they understand, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. One thing that Chavez mentioned to us when we talked to him is that he liked the fact that Chapo is going to be right in his face. He's going to be right in front of him. And Rosario said, yep, that's exactly the way I'm going to fight him. Well, we may find out very quickly how 
how well Chavez takes a punch. With the weather being as cold as it is, a lot of times you look forward to a flood knockdown, flash flood knockdown, because the guys are not really warmed up. Chavez's style has been essentially to wear his opponent down, knock him out in round six through eight. And here we go. As expected, uh, Rosario is on the move. Using his jab, Chavez expected to pretty much take the fight to uh, Rosario. Chavez is known especially for his devastating uh, body attack. And the crowd, after sitting on its hands through the entrance of the fighters and the introductions, has now gotten right into it in the first round. You notice what happened there inside, right to the body. Try, he, what he's trying to do, Chavez, he's trying to slow down the movement of Rosario. And Chavez went up and down, and Rosario hammered him with the left hand. Working the body to slow his man down. No holdings. Rosario, Great. he needs to stay out of the corners. He should try to maintain Chavez and sit on the ring. Uppercut by Chavez. This is such a contrast of styles, Barry, because what you have in Chavez, he's a guy very patient, plotting, sets his man up, works the body, uh, a practitioner. He really is. The way he throws his punches, he's always in position to do bodily harm. Neither of them takes a backward step. Rosario, he's like a little magician there. I just don't like him there in the corner or against the ropes, rather. Couple of left hands by Rosario. Both guys have very, very good defense. Chavez is just keeping his man there in the corner. He's making the fight his fight. No holding, no holding. Great step back, team. Step back. Watch for the uppercuts inside by Chavez. Those are the kind of punches that do the most damage. Chavez came over the top that time with a right hand. It was a good shot. No hold, no hold. And still Rosario has his back to the ropes and he has most of the first round. See, Chavez is going to maintain this type of pressure. Stay right in the chest of Rosario. Because outside, Rosario can get that jab off and not let uh, Chavez set. But inside here, what's the uppercut again, Barry? You notice little short shots. As advertised. Body shots. Well, there will be no intermediate arms agreement in this fight. Okay, don't let him frighten you. Go easy. Don't tell him too much about the, uh, the ropes. Okay, good Let's try to combine more uh, blows. Let's, let's keep on trying. You're always ahead of him. Throwing punches. And watch the uh, the left hook. Here they are at close quarters. A right hand that sort of grazed Rosario's chin. Didn't quite get there. I'm a little surprised, Ray, that Rosario did back up on the ropes and in the corner more than I expected him to in that first round. I'm very surprised, Larry, that he selects to stay against the ropes and... Uh, be vulnerable for those kind of shots, those kind of punches inside by Chavez. But yet, with Tito Alba's translation in the corner, his cornerman said nothing about staying in the middle of the ring. Well, from a guy of personal experience, I know that uh, it'll be more effective and healthier for Rosario's to stay in the center of the ring. Because you have to nullify and keep a guy who has this type of punching power, Chavez, 
not allow him to uh, just get up, get his punches up. And still, Rosario with his back to the ropes. Uppercut by Chavez. Watch the body shot. If you watch the body shot, this is what happened when uh, Rosario fought Ramirez. He was there in the corner. And you notice his left hand, Rosario's hand, left hand keep dropping. That's exactly what you said in your tip of the night, too, something that Rosario could not do, and yet he's doing it. Well, he's also dropping his left hand as he brings it back. Watch for the right hand of Chavez, if Chavez can time it. A counter right hand. Again, the uppercut gets through. It's not causing much damage, but it is consistent. Well, what's happened, as, as Chavez throws his uppercut, he needs to follow it with the right hand. Because the uppercut raises the chin, and the right hand will do the damage. There's the uppercut. And left hook will do fine, too, Barry. Chavez just seems so much physically stronger than uh, Rosario at this point. Well, also, he seems to be fighting a smarter fight right now. Well, he's making uh, Rosario fight his fight. Or Rosario selects the fight that way. You see what happens with the jab? With boxing, Rosario can make this fight a little easier for him. Good body shot, good body shot by Chavez. Now, those are the type of shots that take your legs away from you. You won't see as much movement from Rosario if, if uh, you just take those kind of punches. That was a combination by Rosario, and Chavez comes right back at him. This type of pace, it, it, the uh, outcome will depend upon who's in better shape. And again, the uppercut. That was right on the button. You see, now he's Chavez using both hands now. Now, Chapo has some beautiful combinations, but he's yet to get them off clean. Rosario, that is. So far, Chavez has effectively taken away the punching room that Rosario likes to have by smothering him. You keep on trying. You're doing fine. Use, use your left hand more. Always use the left hand and uh, get away from him. You are first, you are number one, and use more your jab. Left jab. Let's work very well. You have in control of this fight. You are more intelligent than him, so let's demonstrate that, that you're better than him. Let's see how we come out of this round. That is Tito Alba, our translator. Thank you, Tito. So far, the textbook boxer puncher that Rosario is has simply not been able to emerge. And so we start the third round, and we'll see what Chapo Rosario's tactics are this time. He starts out in the center of the ring. Took a right hand, and it backed him up. You see where he just dips those shots to the body. Chavez, a very good body puncher. And what I like mostly about Chavez is the fact that when he goes to the body, he has a tendency to come back up to the head. It's something that you're taught as an amateur, as a youngster. It's a very good habit. And Chavez has the experience, 54 fights. He averages almost seven fights a year. That was a right hand by Rosario. And I like that in Rosario. He goes to the body, but he, he doubles up with the same hand. But I just don't like when he stands directly in front of his man. Another good right hand by Rosario. Chavez, for some reason, is waiting.
Chavez is really making uh, Rosario work. Trying to spend a lot of energy. Good right hand. Crowd around the ring. Very supportive of Chapo Rosario. Chavez's supporters up in the bleacher seats here. I think what, what, what uh, Rosario would need to do is uh, throw some, some roundhouse right hands. And then follow with the left hook. No hold him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on the reason I say that is because the way of the style of uh, Chavez. Straight up. And he has those broad shoulders. Right hand, a little overhead right. And an uppercut by Rosario. Punching it out, punching it out. Go hold it. Actually, it was uh, Chavez that threw the combination I had mentioned earlier. Well, it has the makings of a fight that could come down to condition. That could have been nasty. And how do you see it? Well, Larry, I agree with you. I, I have it 30 to uh, 27, 3 to nothing in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. He's fighting his fight. He's taking Edwin Rosario into the ropes and turning his left hook under constantly and catching Rosario to the body. Chavez is ahead, but I gave Rosario the last round. We start the fourth round. Chavez with the choir boy looks. looks I just anything but like a fighter. I just saw uh, Hector Camacho at ringside yelling to Rosario to box, to use the ring. And it's good advice. It's also good advice to Yelta Camacho to box. He hasn't had a fight in about a year, has he? Well, he's dressed. He's really dressed up in his sequence jacket. Guys, yeah, we're in the drapes. There was a left hand by Rosario. With both fighters, it's not going to be just one punch to, to, uh, to put him away. It's going to be a combination. Now we're seeing jabs, left jabs from Chavez. And again, a lot of danger of another butt as both of them lead with their heads on occasion. Good head movement by Chavez. Very good head movement. You know what he walks, keeps his eyes on his opponent. He's blocking a lot of those shots with his arms. He's Good, very good concentration. He knows how he backs away, he slips punches. And watch he come back with something of his own. There it, that's it. Right off the ropes with a good shot. Watch, now he can start to double up to the body, watch. You see here, this is when he gets his man in trouble. This is when Rosario gets days to get out of there. Chavez pressing Rosario. You see what happens, Barry? He turns the table around because he lets his man throw his punches and then he comes on. He retaliates. He doesn't let up at this point. That's why I, I admire mostly about Chavez. Now for Rosario, he has to forget about the machoism and then box again. Get his man to clear his head. Good shot. Double shot. Double left hook. He finished it too, with the shot to the body. Good shot, devastating shot to the body. This tells you that Rosario is in tremendous shape to take those kind of punches. Come on, come on. Another thing I like about Chavez, he really doesn't waste any punches. He waits, he so signs his punches. He really is, Barry. What's come back up to the head? The left hook there is a beautiful short. There was a right hand by Rosario, but Chavez remains right on top of it. Rosario, his head still is clear. He's watching his man. 
But Chavez is coming out on top here. Hunting it out. Good round. Good round for Chavez. Neither man backing off. Two sí, champions Muy going at each other. Tito. Muy bien. Very well, very well. Se le está abriendo la boca, Julio. He is opening his mouth, uh, Julio. Use the, the left. Keep on using the left. Left hook. Keep it at a distance. Keep him at a distance. Remember that now you, sometimes you have to throw your right. You have to use your head. What I want to see you working. You have you have the power to work like a man. So I want you see I want to see you working as a man. You must be ahead always. It's your life and in, in what his corner is really telling Rosario is you must start to dominate this fight because the appearance is that he is dominating you. And the appearance is important as far as officials are concerned even though Rosario has been getting in a lot of good shots at close quarters. Chavez is fighting, Ray, like a guy who's had 54 fights. I don't care if you're fighting Carmen Miranda, you still have been in there 54 times. Well, the fact is, the fact of the matter is, Barrett, the fact he's been getting the activity. He's been getting a lot of activity, and the fact he's a good trainer. Plus, I think... Uh, a fighter like Chavez is a natural. He's a thinker. And yet Rosario hasn't taken a step back. And you, neither man has really been hurt. You must watch the way, and it's something very, very, of great importance inside, that Chavez, he, he, he slips punches, and then he comes back. Big right hand by Chavez. Now, what Chavez is doing is actually the same principle of chopping the tree down, working the body, and bringing the hands down. Three punch combination, one of them was low, but... Rosario needs to bring them hands up. Chavez. You see, you, what's happened actually is that Chavez is staying close to uh, Rosario, not letting him get his punches or his leverage off, and he's loading up. Chavez starting to load up with his punches, waiting for that one big shot. Combination again. Everything Chavez is throwing is in combination. Now watch Chavez, uh, once again, get inside. He works his way inside with the jab, gets close, dips, and then, ho and then hooks to the body. And there's a little swelling under the left eye of Chapo Rosario. Punching it out. Punching it out. No hole. Come on, play. That's a This is another dominant round for Chavez so far. There is no, I don't see the snap I see with uh, Rosario. <laughs> Once again, as Larry Merchant pointed out a little bit earlier, he's just not giving Rosario room to punch. Whoa. Chavez keeps coming, and he keeps coming right straight through Rosario's best punches. Repita. Repita. Slightly puffed left eye for Rosario. ¿Qué me dice? ¿Qué me dice, Chapo? Que no se los brazos como estoy trinco. No, pues chicos, vamos a soltarnos de los brazos. Eso, ya tenemos que soltarnos de los brazos. Here's some of the action early in the fight. A good straight right hand by Chavez. Chavez has shown that he really has some sophisticated boxing talents. He's not just a brawler. He has great presence in the ring. He takes a great punch. And he has patience. 
The interesting thing, Ray and Barry, in those early fights we showed, the Gomez Pintor, Gomez Sanchez, Arguello, and Pryor, the naturally bigger man ended up dominating all of those fighter fights. But here, Rosario, who appears to be the naturally bigger man, is not dominating the fight. Not yet in any event. Actually, to me, uh, Larry, it seems though Chavez looks bigger and stronger. And uh, he looked fresh of the two. And the last round, Rosario just seemed to lose a little bit of the starch in some of his punches. Not to say he was getting tired necessarily. During the rest period, Chavez looked over here and smiled meaning confidence and uh, things were going his way. A translation from the corner of Edwin Chapo Rosario was that Rosario was saying to his handlers that something was wrong with his arms. He didn't know what it was. He just couldn't seem to get started. Well, like I, 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 in fact, I observed that earlier, Barry. There's not a snap to... Uh, Rosario's punches, like I've seen in the past. Um, also, I tell you what's not making this any better for Rosario is the fact that Chavez has been perpetual motion. I mean, he's maintained and kept up the pressure. No holding, no holding. All right, great. Step back, step back. Well, we will certainly keep an ear on the corner of Edwin Rosario after this round. Not sure if it's something physical or something psychological. Does that happen sometimes, Ray, where you just don't have it on a particular night. It's the most frightened experience you can have. And here, that was a good combination by Chavez, but you you had those days. You're in the ring, it is just not there. This is dangerous for, for both fighters here. Because they both will the way. Chavez again, everything in combination, and again a little bit of a headbutt. Great, He has Chavez has really turned this into a street fight. But a beautiful street fight that is. Look at the way he doubles up the hook, triples up his hook. Always finishes to the body. And of course, one of the judging criteria is ring generalship, and Chavez just seems to have all of that. Look at the, look at the combinations, and that hurt Rosario. Look at the combination. And he becomes even more aggressive. Chavez, he says that his man is a little dazed, and now he cuts, he cut the ring off. Harold Letterman, our unofficial, official, official. <laughs> How do you see this fight so far? Larry, I've got it five to one in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. I, I think he's definitely the effective aggressor and the cleaner puncher. I think he's making Edwin Rosario fight his fight. And the main thing is, it's the body punching, the tremendous body punching by Chavez. I have the fight for one and one to this point. I do think that Rosario is starting to get in some harder punches. Long punch that the crowd saw and rose and cheered. I don't know how much damage it did. But right now, Rosario is in the position of having to win back his championship, so to speak, because he is behind. So we start the seventh round. As, as it was in the first round, or the second round, Chavez is always off his stool first, ready to start the, the fight again. Seeing more boxing from Chavez, use of his jab, 
Good upper body movement. Using the ring. Slipping punches. Counter with the right hand. Rosario now is trying to pressure Chavez. And see whether he can turn the tables. It's a part what do you think is going here. on here, Ray, that suddenly Chavez has started to box and move away, and Rosario is chasing him, and it's and reversing. Do you think that Chavez is taking a blow? I think so. He, he executed or exerted himself a great deal in that sixth round, threw a lot of punches, and now he's back on the attack, throwing a lot of punches again, put his com combinations together. Still a little bit of swelling under the left eye. It hasn't gotten appreciably worse for Rosario in the past couple of rounds. And it's not really, really in a position where the eye's in any danger right at the moment of closing. That's a smart fighter, though. After he throws a great deal of punches, he becomes a little arm weary. And uh, what normally a, a smart fighter would do, he would move around and use the ring, and they come back. Again, this is not a good place for Rosario to be. Especially when he's standing straight up. You see what happens there? Especially standing straight up. Well, really the impressive thing about Chavez is he invariably will at least double up and usually throw three or four punch combinations. Almost never one punch. I don't like the right hand. The right hand of uh, Rosario. Nor does he has a tendency to drop it. And that left hook of Chavez is so devastating. Look how he worked the body. Both hands, both sides, both sides, digging both sides. That's what my trainer Dave Jacobs taught us years ago. Work both sides. And the other thing that was interesting right there is Chavez scored with about six punches, and Rosario retaliated, and every punch that Rosario retaliated with was caught in the gloves of Chavez. This is tough, old-fashioned, Real prize fighting. You don't see quality fighters going at each other like this inside and pounding at each other. Tito? We have to go take care of this swelling here in your face. Okay. Uh, rub his, uh, uh, rub his uh, arm. Breathe deeply. Deeply. Deep more. Deep more. Don't move your face. Use your left hand. Use your left. Left, left, more left. You're doing fine. You're doing fantastically well. Don't let him do anything to you. We haven't seen any quit, certainly in Rosario now, as some people thought off of his earlier fight against Ramirez. But he's got to do more than not quit here. He's got to start hurting the other guy. And he took a good shot from Chavez. A left hand and a right hand came right behind it. You know what's happened? Rosario can't get his punches off. I don't know whether or not uh, uh, something's wrong with him. But the way he looks, now he's in shape, no question about that. That's a given. But Chavez has just been just weighing him down. Body shots, right hand. What about the weather? Is that any kind of a factor? No, the weather has no effect at all at this point here. If anything, if it was hot, then it would be a factor. A big factor. What's the factor here now is punches. A lot of punches. Again, Chavez trying to uh, get a little breather. This is the eighth round. We're going 12. Last time Rosario went 12 rounds. It was not a happy evening for him. He lost the split decision to Macho Camacho. I see that uh, Chavez trying to set up Rosario for the right hand. And the reason I say it is because of, of the way he positions himself inside. He waits for Rosario to throw a jab and, and try to counter it. But what's going to get Chavez closer is his jab. The jab's going to lead him inside. The mouthpiece flew out of the mouth of Rosario. Signs of two things, fatigue and, and hurt. 
Again, this is beautiful. Now watch Chavez. Let again, he lets his opponent throw punches, and then he comes back. And he comes back hard. And he also comes back strong. Just so smart. And there's a big combination. That hurt Rosario. It also cut him. And he's in a world of trouble. Oh, no. This is experience here. Still 30 seconds remaining in round number eight. And Rosario will do well just to get through the round. Took another good right hand. Still 15 seconds. Look at the combinations, Barry. And now I see angles by Rosario, but it may be a little too late for that now. Because he was really rocked. And Rosario's going to get through this round. You're just hearing a big cheer. It was not only for a furious round, but because, but because the over-under was eight rounds. How many I want? How many I want to use? It's even be, money, be, roughly. Give me some water. That the fight would go eight rounds. Profundo, papá. Profundo. Deep, uh, uh, deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Give me the towel. Fine, fine, fine. It's okay. Yeah. He's okay. Yes. Profundo, papá. Here's the most spectacular punch of the round. There's the left and a straight right. And Rosario is in deep trouble going into the ninth round. He has just been overwhelmed by his opponent. And almost from the opening bell. You should have seen the expression on Chavez's face before the, uh, the bell rung because it, it, it was intense, so intense. He knew exactly what he had to do. When, when a, a puncher like Rosario finds that his punch isn't really doing anything to his opponent, he's got to go to Plan B, and Plan B hasn't worked. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> he's down about G right now, I think. Well, both fans are there. there. Both fighters block each other. <laughs> go home. He's I'll see if that lights a fire under Rosario, who started this round like he was still hurt, Ray. I'm watching the legs of Chavez. Chavez was rocked by the punch, too. Both guys rocked each other. It more so uh, gained some respect from Chavez for a second or two. And the other thing, too, I mentioned that Rosario was cut at the end of the eighth round. And I can't quite tell where the blood is coming from, but it appears to be inside his mouth. Now Rosario is using the ring. That exchange might have given Rosario a little bit of life here. It was almost as like a reassurance to say, I can hurt you too, pal. And it's tough sometimes, Barry. You're in that ring and you hit your guy with the best shot and you're known for your punching power and the guy doesn't move. It's quite discouraging. Go home and punch it out. That was a lunging right hand by Chavez. And the blood is coming from inside the mouth. That could sometimes mean a problem with the jaw. Joe, I, 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 I think it's the lip because the upper, little uppercuts by uh, Chavez. Chavez and Rosario has been through one of the great deal upper, uppercuts. Quite a lot of blood, actually, coming from the mouth of Chapo Rosario. Twenty seconds remaining in the ninth round. Oh, that was that punch hurt. That punch really hurt Rosario. 
He caught, Chavez caught him moving in. It's a long fight for Rosario. Rosario is trying to figure out, what do I do now? Somewhere in his heart, he knows that his title is tottering on his head. And here's an interesting graphic, the fact that neither fighter has knocked an opponent out after the ninth round. But it's more cheering, certainly, for Javez than it is for Rosario. Uh, deep breath, deep breath. Are you okay? Keep, keep on breathing. Deep, deep. Don't let him hit you. Don't let him hit you. Get some of the water up over there. We talked earlier, Barry, about how well conditioned these fighters Get the water were, and it certainly is borne out here because ordinary fighters just couldn't take this kind of pace and punishment. The cut, incidentally, does appear to be on the lip, just judging from how they worked on it. But there is a lot of blood. See, this is, once again, Rosario should not be there. I mean, against the ropes. His right eye is starting to swell. And uh, he doesn't really have the firepower at this point to remain against the ropes or in the corner. Chavez is standing right, just close to, so close to him, smothering his punches. And he's been doing that again, almost from the opening bell. But from a judge's standpoint, uh, Rosario has to fight inside and make something happen. Because he's giving away too many rounds. Or Chavez is taking so many rounds. Another right hand. And again, Richard Steele telling them to watch their heads. They've been close to a butt on several occasions, and on a couple of occasions, they actually have butted heads. If the fans at home was, were here, they could appreciate the body shots of Chavez. He gets his whole body behind him. I just think he's had a master fight plan. He came in here and said, I'll like it if Rosario doesn't step back. That was a good left hand. It just stopped Chapo in his tracks. Oh, this, he's hurt very bad. Rosario's ready to go. And Chavez again, not wasting any punches. Now what Chavez has to do is get his, first of all, get Rosario off of him. Fake, couple feints, and then come back with something. Left hook there. Rosario just looks like a beaten man. He has absorbed an awful lot and is in trouble again. Chavez says to keep doubling those punches up, ways doubling those combinations up. Both hands, both hands. And the left hook. Inside of 30 seconds remaining. Rosario has a big heart, no question about it. He's a beaten warrior at this point here. And left, left, left eye, eye is almost closed. Yes, and he's trying to hang in there. I'll be interested to see what his corner, what his corner stops the fight, because he's really hurt. But he's holding his own, huh? But taking a brutal beating here. Oh. This corner may stop the fight. The, the left eye is really bad. Chavez is turning this into an abattoir of Rosario's blood. Harold, how do you have it now? Larry, very, very big for Julio Chavez. I just think Edwin Rosario is getting mugged. I, I mean, Chavez is doing everything that we that we score on. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense. Winning all the way. You okay, oh, Chapo? Yes, he's okay. Look at me, Chapo. Look at me. Look at me. Open. Open up. And the doctor is now looking he's okay. He's okay. at Rosario's he's okay. eye. There's a big, big swelling under Rosario's left eye. Yeah, let it go. How do you feel? How do you feel? Okay. 
The other thing about Chavez is that he has a chin that's made out of some kind of metal that I don't know about. He has taken some cracks from a really hard-hitting lightweight. I just and noticed, Brad, I'll cut you off. But, uh, I think that uh, Rosario requested to leave his mouthpiece out. Yeah, and his eye is almost closed. The left eye of Rosario is now virtually closed. Richard Steele almost certainly will not let this go too far. Rosario just fighting on guts. Because like now, Rosario can't see the right hand coming. What he's doing now, he's actually just winning his own punches and hope one land. He's fighting on sheer determination. Look at the body shots. You gotta appreciate them. Both Chavez hands. Chavez not letting him out of the corner, continuing to just put all the pressure on Edwin Chapo Rosario. Right, wait, wait, wait. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. And again, a warning for butting to both men. What I see now is a right hand. Probably in the punch. <laughs> Rosario giving one for every three he gets. Well, the mouth, I just noticed the mouthpiece is in Rosario's mouth. Rosario just does not seem to be able to get himself out of his own corner. Halfway through the 11th round. The eyes completely closed now. Which of course means that Rosario cannot see the right hand of Chavez coming at all. One minute remaining in the 11th round. And that's got to feel like an eternity. Well, if Hart wins fights, then Rosario they stop might the fight. draw. That's it's it. Out. They threw the towel in. It's over. Rosario never quit, but his corner did the right thing. to make $600,000. I want to tell which you. Which is Rosario's purse. And look at Chavez. He looks like he can go out and skip rope for 15 He's, rounds. He looks so fresh, Larry. <laughs> this man is going to be so, so difficult to beat. Trains hard, dedicated. Very professional. His whole attitude, extremely professional. Both very, very likable guys. One of those fights when you meet with both the fighters, you just... You come away saying, boy, I hope he doesn't lose. And you come away from the other fighters' camp saying, boy, I hope he doesn't lose. Two real champions. One thing, you have to give credit to uh, Rosario. He fought, he fought his heart out. He was handicapped, his eye was swollen, his lip was cut, and he still hung in there. And his corner, like Larry said, did the right thing. Let's take a look at the last minute or so of this fight. And you can see that face tells you the story of this fight. We'll see some of the action from the 11th round, and it was just merciless as Chavez did what he'd been doing the whole fight, and that is just smother Edwin Rosario. It was just a matter of time, Barry. The way that uh, Chavez executed his tactics were perfect. He worked the body, he doubled up the left hook, the right hand. He had his man hurt, he stayed in his chest, he cut the ring off, he did everything that was necessary to beat a fighter, a great fighter, like Edwin Rosario. And you saw the mouthpiece of Rosario go flying out. It was just a few seconds after that that Rosario's corner wisely threw in the towel and ended this fight with Chavez, now the new WBA lightweight champion of the world. And you have an idea, you might see these two 
have at it once again. Here are some of the numbers on our punch stat figures. Rosario threw 731 punches. you believe that? 11 rounds. That's almost 70 punches around. Landed only 264. Chavez was just brilliant in his execution. 61%. And incidentally, in that last round, Chavez landed 73 of 91 punches. Now, he said that he wasn't wasting punches. Even when he had his man beat and was just trying to get him out of there, he didn't waste any punches in that situation either. Now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall, and we'll get the official decision. Chuck? Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, 36-7 of the 11th round, the winner by a TKO and new WBA lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez. Well, to say that's well-deserved is to make a great understatement, I'll tell you. Great, great accomplishment, great fight. And a great fighter. I loved it. You know, there's a lot of conversation. This guy had 54 fights, but who did he fight? He didn't fight anybody. Like I said, I don't care who he fought. He learned something, and tonight he brought it all with him. I thought Rosario would have the edge in boxing generalship, but it turned out that Chavez carried out his game plan, and it proved to be quite effective. Well, Larry Merchant off. has made his way to the new champion and let's go right now to Larry Merchant and Tito Alba will translate this for us. Larry? Okay, Julio Cesar Chavez is the new lightweight champion. Describe the fight to us and what you wanted to do to him and how the fight went. ¿Cómo fue la pelea y si todo sucedió como tú querías que fuese ahora que eres el nuevo campeón? Fue una pelea dura, una pelea muy fuerte, Rosario. Es una... a hard fight, a strong fight. Rosario es un gran pegador, pega Rosario muy fuerte. Rosario es un good hitter. Me lastimó hard. una vez. He hit me once. Pero yo sabía que él no podía noquearme. But I knew he could not knock me out. When did he hit him and hurt him? ¿Cuándo fue que te, te, te golpeó fuerte? En el décimo round me pegó en la izquierda, bajé la mano. In the tenth round he hit me with a left hook. Sentí el golpe más duro de él. Was your plan to try to smother him so that he couldn't have punching room? Tú estabas tratando de cansarlo para que él no te pudiera pegar. Esa era la pelea mía, forzarlo, siempre lo dije desde that, antes de que empezara la pelea. That was my fight, try to keep him away and tear him out. When did you know that he was weakening? When did you think you had the fight under control? ¿Cuándo supiste que se estaba debilitando y que tú estabas ganando la pelea? Desde el segundo round yo sabía que Rosario no podía noquearme porque me conectó duro sin... Y no, y no pudo tumbarme. At the second round, I knew I was winning the fight because he hit me and I could hardly feel it. Why do Mexican fighters take a punch so well? Porque cómo es que los mexicanos pueden recibir golpes tan bien? Es que nos preparamos a conciencia y we prepare ourselves y trabajamos muy duro. We work very hard. Y además somos muy valientes. And we are very brave. M many of you, your countrymen, thought that Rosario would not be able to take your punch. Did he take your punch well? Mucha gente en México pensaba que, que Rosario no podía eh, recibir tus golpes. Que, ¿Cómo recibió Rosario tus golpes? ¿Cómo crees tú que lo recibió porque él se preparó muy duro y además aguanta golpe rosario because he, he can take a punch and he work hard congratulations what is your feeling now about winning the championship felicitaciones como te sientes ahora eh, con respecto a haber ganado el campeonato muy contento y quiero unificar quiero unificar el campeonato and i want to unify the championship y posteriormente buscar el campeonato welter junior and uh, later on get the welter junior championship thank you very much thank you, thank you. <laughs> 